Is it recording? Yep. Oh shit. All right. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, here I am doing a podcast with one of my friends in Melbourne. His name is Jared Chua. In what kind of we are? It's better that way. So yes, hi Julian's viewers. My name is Jared. I am uh, from Malaysia as well. I grew up the first nineteen years of my life. Came here for university. I got into the University of Melbourne. Now I graduated in 2017 and now I am working full time as an analyst in finance and I am also writing my own book called How to Get a Great Job. So, okay, let, let, let's go into more, I mean, you like talking about stuff, <coughs> right? Pretty boring, like, I'm graduate from Melbourne here and there, so let's go more in deep. What, what makes you so special? Uh, I don't think I'm particularly special in any way, first of all. Um, surely everyone has their own, everyone has their own Skill sets. Uh, skill sets and talents, you know, some people might be athletic, mm-hmm. athletically inclined, mm-hmm. I am not athletically Can't see that. inclined at all, I can't run, I can't do any sports, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not particularly smart, but you know, if you, ask, if you have to ask why am I special, I would say that, you know, I can um, befriend people well, mm-hmm. quite sociable in that aspect, and mm-hmm. I can generally get along with people in general quite well. Yeah, I mean, all those are just bullshit. Uh. So basically, honestly, the, the main topic I want to talk about is st- studying. Because Jared, from what I know, is a pretty good person in university. Yeah, he is. You were, so what again, you were president of your commerce club, Melbourne U. You won the Melbourne U startup competition. You know, and Melbourne U is like the number one, number two university in Australia. And you did works with AFL. You went overseas for something, you know. I mean, you know the you know the joke where your parents want an Asian child, and he's basically an Asian child, zero point zero one percent in terms of studying. <laughs> yeah, the reason why I did this all <coughs> is mostly because today I want to ask Jared about mostly about studying and how it impacted his career, his life, and so on and so forth. Because I realize there's many people out there that they don't know where to value studying. Yeah, where it be financial issues, where it be they think studying is useless or important. And how it goes down with in their life in their career. So, so yeah. After going for Melbourne U for three years and honestly, what's the most important thing you got out of <coughs> your university career? Well, first of all, to that point, Julian, I have to say and thank you for the, the the nice words, the kind words. But I have to say that studying in general is pretty useless. Studying in a university, um, going for lectures and a proper education, in my opinion, is relatively useless. Um, the most I got out of university, one thing I can share with your audiences or to yourself is, you know, what to get out of university is to make the most of your opportunity there. Mm. Like, yes, I didn't spend three years to just do nothing and just study. Like, I can tell you now, my grades are not the best. I have, uh, I had a 72 average when I graduated, Mm -hmm. but I made, I tried to make the most out of my time in university. Like you mentioned, you know, run my own, um, the international commerce club. Uh, being an ambassador for uni, trying to give back to students, mentor here and there, did a bit of um, internships, working in fund management. Right. So you said that studying, studying is studying in a university setting is useless, but studying is important. No, at the end of the day, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it depends what you want. Mm. I did accounting finance. Mm. Yes, um, the knowledge that I gained out of accounting and finance is has been useful in what I'm doing in my finance job. But if you have to go, I mean, at the end of the day, graduating from university is just a piece of paper. Mm. But yeah. how important is the piece of paper? Because <coughs> we know or we heard that the paper, of course, it's not the end of the world. It's not the most important thing, but it is important in some sense. It is like the safeguard that you know, if things go wrong, there's always this paper to help you out. Is it true in some sense? Like, how I, important I, was it? <coughs> I, th- I think so. Mm-hmm. I think so because... You know, at the end of the day, I have something that I can fall back on. Mm. This piece of paper. You know, even if I don't want to do anything related to accounting, even though if I don't want to do anything related to finance, mm. even if I want if I want to start my own, say, if I want to be a YouTuber or my be an influencer mm. or some sort, mm. I can always do that, pursue it, knowing that I have a safety net that if I fail, mm-hmm. I can always always find myself a job in accounting or tax. For example, 
So how, okay, let's say a student comes up to you and he or she is in the middle of deciding whether he or she should finish his uni or even start his uni compared to that. <coughs> how high would you prioritise? Okay, it's a random uni, it's not Melbourne, it's just a random <coughs> university. Right? How high would you prioritise them to go for it? And how high would you prioritise them to just maybe start working or something like that? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, well since, since you've met a lot of people in Melbourne New since eh, you said you told me like this, you told me that studying is not important, but the sign <coughs> up, right? So in some sense, there's this level of hey, I, I need to go to uni just to experience it and to get the backup set, and it's only three mu- three years of my life, right? So okay, sorry. Let me just rephrase that then. Mm. I I wouldn't say studying is completely useless, mm. but it is not. Um, Take your time. Yeah, it's not completely useless, but it is not a waste of money. Mm-hmm. So if a student would come up to me, you know, a random student and asking me whether should I go to uni. Mm. First of all, you know, culturally I'm still Asian. Mm-hmm. I still believe that, you know, if I have my own kids in the future, I would still want them to get a proper education. Mm. But you have heard success stories of, you know, people dropping out, yeah, being course. very successful, not even going to uni. Yes, but that that gene or that trait is not in everyone. Mm-hmm. Some people literally don't have the don't have it don't have what it takes to to do what, what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And if they, you know, eight, 18, 19 years old try to run their own business or try to do something, I personally don't think like with that you don't have the experience to run it. Mm-hmm. Yes, you will learn through failure. Mm-hmm. For sure, but it boils down to how much experience you can get to build yourself up to a certain stage where you can confidently uh, give it your all in trying something. Do you think there's talent involved? Like you're just born with this immense talent in it? I wouldn't say it's talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it depends. Okay? It depends. If, if, if the thing you want to do is a... Uh, it's a... Uh, Sports school, or if it's a technical coding tech startup, and you have like naturally talented in numbers and mm-hmm. and and understanding, because I because I just watched this Netflix show about Bill Gates, so oh, yeah, 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 talented, yeah. yeah. So then in that case, yes, it's talent. But at the end of the day, it's not whether you're born with talent; it's whether you're born with you know. I almost would say the drive or the mentality, thinking that you know you can do things in your own hands. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to be a little bitch mm-hmm. for your whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alright, so okay, this is a fun question. So there's talent and there's drive. Yeah. How high would you rate any of those? So I'm passionate in something, but I know I'm not good. Right? Or I know I'm good in something but I'm not that passionate. What would you what would you pursue? What would you choose? I mean I almost think, you know, I almost think that drive wins all the time. Mm-hmm. Personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, my, my, my personal self, number one, I'm not talented in anything. But number two, I would think that, you know, not to say that I have a drive, la, but I am a bit more relatively driven. Means, means I don't want to say that I got a drive. I don't want to say myself that I could drive, but I would say that I know for a fact that I can take things in my own hands and have a better outcome. Let's just rephrase that. Let, let, okay, let us talk something more about university. Okay. Because this thought came to our mind. Since you were like the president of your club, you yep. were featured in your website and all, yep. were there any point in your time in university when you hanged out with people and you were like, damn, that is not right for me. Yes? I mean, in some sense, they're just stupid, I guess. Like, so, not, not in general, but do you have that feeling when you meet people or sometimes you meet people in university in that sense when you think that, oh, we're already 22, you shouldn't, you are just, you're acting pretty young, you're acting like a kid. Your maturity level isn't there, you know. Do you ever have that mentality? About myself or about other people? About other people when you meet, because you meet so many types of people in university. I mean, I mean, if you say it's, okay, I'll, I've, I've had that, that, that kind of thought, that kind of epitome. Makes sense. Epiphany to not only sense. myself, but also for other people. Yes. And I'll share both. Mm, of course. With other people, yes, I still, I mean, we are 23, 2022 mm. for you. We still have friends, you know, not knowing what they want to do in their life, mm. still 
playing games all the time, still going playing for drinks. Playing games is good. Playing games is good, all right. Still, still, still going for drinks and still going like you know, not doing much other than working a part time job or not even working or just bumming around. Then in that case, then then for me, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, you have what it takes to 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 drive your own future. Mm. Why are you not to say wasting it, but what? Why are you? Alright, so but what, what if they tell you that that's what they like to do? They, they can't handle stress. Okay, then then that's why then 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 I understand. Like, some people need to take it slow. Mm-hmm. Biologically, mm-hmm. due to you know how they are brought up, due to their their personal well being. So referring more to friends or not friends, I would say people when you met in university it tells you that they wanna achieve, they wanna be like a millionaire at, at thirty. Or billionaire at 40 and then you see them spending half their time doing some nonsense on day. I mean you well, you also understand that there are times where you don't try to help everyone, you they just say what you want to do and you just if you don't see it, you just you just let, let let them be. But I have met a few students who said that they want to, you know, achieve a certain number of things and they themselves as nineteen year olds they are doing very good stuff. Doing very, very good stuff in terms of you know, running a few businesses by themselves, you know, trying to run for a few uh, presidential positions in university but did not but surely but they, they, they did not get it but still they have the drive to do it and those students I think that you know I believe that they can do good for themselves am I still not answering your question? understandable <laughs> it's fine okay well one oh. thing uh, okay I want to share also mm. share a story uh, come on. On, on, my, on myself yeah, okay yeah, yeah. When I have this this kind of um, thought on, on myself that that's not right, I should be doing more. Mm. Back then in university, like you mentioned, you know, yes, I was president of the Commerce Student Society. I was uh, an ambassador for Melbourne Uni. Mm. I did my internships, but I did all that because I wanted to get a grad, like a job in PwC, mm. a job in PwC in Australia. Mm. I used to think that was the that was the goal. Mm. But then I got, but then I got to study in UC Berkeley, Mm. in San Francisco, Mm. uh, to do a course of entrepreneurship. And the people there, they are next next level. Mm. Like Melbourne Uni or anything in Australia cannot compare to them. Mm. They, every single one of my classmates I met were running their own little startup or doing their own, I wouldn't even say little, their own big initiative. Mm. You know, I've got classmates, her name is Shafali. She, She was part of, the unis like UC Berkeley's rocket student society and she she got to meet Elon Musk she was launching rockets <laughs> as part of the university society yeah. a few friends in you know UC Berkeley's blockchain association mm. were the go-to consultants to even the big banks like you know Goldman Sachs mm. and you know worldwide organizations go to uni kids for blockchain advice yeah. I've got Friends, you know, their own startups making recyclable yeah, membranes yeah, yeah. of shoes mm-hmm. and they are now the number one most funded Kickstarter on in, in Europe. And when I met them, that's when I realized that then the standards the standards are, are, are hugely different. Actually, for me doing everything that I'm doing to gun for my PwC job and for them doing everything because they want to just make the world a better place or to achieve success by their own means. That's when I really got my eyes so, open. So, so do you like, think how much, like, even for students out there, how much do you think for you personally, you were influenced by people around you that you wanted to be great, <coughs> go to PwC, and be like a model, a, a role model? You could say, how much was it? Do you think it's because of you wanted it, or because the people surrounding you, because of the culture of Malaysian and Australian, and about the mentality that that is the goal, that only when you go to US and you realize, hey, the world is actually so much bigger. Yeah, well, because of most people, the way we see you <coughs> from a TV screen, right? The way we, most people see UKS Europe is just from a TV screen or from a movie screen. They've never actually once been there, understood the culture, and know what's going on. Yeah, they don't really know how big it is compared to Malaysia and Australia and even the smaller countries here. I guess it really has to do with you know upbringing, mm. and the culture in Malaysia and the culture here in Australia mm. where. You know, success means you get a job mm. in a big company mm. and you slave your way there for the first 10 years and mm. you get promoted and then, you know, who knows at that when you're 40 years yes. old. That was what I was brought up. Mm. You know, not to say that my, it was forced, but not to say that my parents forced me to. My parents never forced me to do anything, but they were very encouraging me in all this, 
all these things, they so will, the they will nudge you. me in a few ways. Yeah. And you know, with myself, you know, I I try to be the best in whatever I do. Mm-hmm. Not best for myself, but I mean just the best in in general. Mm. I, 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 I literally have a need to want to be better than other people. Yeah. And by doing so, you know, even from younger days in, in high school when I was doing things here and there, mm. here and there, I... And that's the same reason why I became president of all these clubs and did all these things because I literally wanted to show that I can. If I can do it, why the hell, why on God's green earth can't you? Mm. So that's the reason why, you know, a lot of my peers around me, they they could not stay in Australia or they could not get a job in Australia. Mm. Uh, a lot of my local friends as well, they, you know, it's hard to get a job in, in the big four. Yeah. And that's why the, that was why I was learning for to show that you know, to show that I can do it. What 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 do you? Cause I mean we all know that sadly, you got I, rejected. I, I got rejected. Yeah. But all with your resume. All, all, all my all my applications okay. were rejected. What made you think that they rejected you actually? Like for me, when you told me you got rejected, I was like, huh? Then the first thought was, what about me? Like if, if I were to go, I mean, I women. <laughs> let's not even talk about it. But why do you think you got rejected? I think, I honestly think that I got rejected because I wanted it too badly. Was it because of the resume? No, I don't think it's because of the resume. The resume got me to pass to the, the first few stages and everything, but what got me rejected was really because I wanted it too badly. In, in, in video interviews, in interviews and everything, I didn't treat like the other person like a person. Mm-hmm. Like, I really wanted to, uh, you know, leave such a good impression or that was almost overwhelmingly and... I didn't talk to them like a like a person. Mm. I treated them like a ro- like a robot, or I, you know, was extremely rigid, too conscious on giving the perfect structured answer mm. that I forgot the personality and the humanity side of things, which is why I got rejected on the jobs. Strongly believe so. Strongly believe so. Mm. Try to achieve that perfectionist kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Actually, I wonder too, what's the most, for you, right, what do you think is the most stupid thing university has ever, uh, like, sorry, let me rephrase that, like the ideology of university and sometimes how much you have to pay for certain courses and not everyone is wealthy or rich to even go to good universities, more or less average universities, what do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions about universities that most adults or people do not know? I'm talking about people who have not entered university. Or, or people who are very old, like parents, what are the one biggest con- misconception you think about university? First of all, I have to say that, you know, I have a few friends who never got into uni, they dropped out after year 12, mm. and they're doing pretty alright for themselves. Yeah, but, but then not everyone can get that. <coughs> Secondly, to that comment, I want to say that, you know, I'm not an advocate at all for not going to university. I think everyone still needs to have still needs to have a proper education. Mm-hmm. To my previous point of saying that university is useless, I meant that, you know, just going to uni to study mm. is a waste of your time. Mm. Your university is a good platform for you to grow your network. A lot of people in my network, I mean, everyone in my network I met in university. Mm. And everything that I have, you know, did that led me to where I am today is because of university. Mm. So, without that platform, as Without university as a platform, I wouldn't have been able to achieve any of the above. I wouldn't have been able to, to go to UC Berkeley to open my eyes. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't have been able to, you know, get into the habit of reading. So university is definitely important. In terms of the money spent, is it worth going into uni? Well, it depends on the individual. Okay? Four years ago, I had no clue what I wanted to do. Would you pay debt to go to university? you hope that I mean if I had to do it all over again yeah if I had to do it all over again and for me to pay to get in debt to go into university like if a student was going to university now and he or she doesn't have the best background because university is so up there the parents want them to go to people around them say you need to go to university right and he or she knows that she may or she will incur some amount of debt going through that course what would you tell he or, he or she? Well, if 
you have to be in heavily indebted to get a degree, then probably that will not be the best thing for you to do. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, a degree will just get you the lowest tier job in any of these big companies, mm. um, which you know pays you a measly fifty grand a year mm. for you to hopefully try to work your way up for ten years, mm. and what. Imagine it costed you, what, 30 grand to get into uni. Mm. How many years do you have to work to save to pay back your uni degrees? Mm. Seven, eight years? If you really know what you want to do, you know, at 18, 19, so if you really know what you want to do, if you know you want to run your own digital marketing agency, mm. for example, mm. then yes, these things can be self-taught. Mm. Can be, you know, self-taught at a fraction of the cost. You just have to put in your effort and if you do that four years instead of going to university for four years I, I can almost guarantee that you'll be and if you commit to it you'll be significantly better off mm. most of the things that i'm doing now are all self-taught all my things in digital marketing all my things in e-commerce have all been self-taught i've never taken a single single subject on growing a business or marketing in uni. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we one one last question. Let me think what's a good spicy question. Uh hmm. What do you think, Jared? What, what would be funny is if things not even on. Oh that's true. I think it's I think it's because. What's a good question to ask? Well, what's an interesting thing I should ask? Actually, I never really thought about it. What's because I, I know you in some sense, not very well, but I do know you. So sometimes it's a bit hard for me to think about something. Well, what do you think is something that is good to talk to? Because I do know people, I have friends that, like I said earlier, they're around the age 20, 21, right? And then, as you know, Malaysia isn't a country where the economy is is at its all-time high. So there's a larger percentage of people that is struggling or having a hard time in uni or doing it just because of people around them telling them to do it. But in their mind, they're telling themselves, hey, should I drop out? Right? What should I do it? I'm not putting any effort. Like, I'm not even putting any effort in my assignments. I'm literally not even doing it. I'm just doing going to university for the sake of going to university and hope I just with it and get a degree out of it and that jump starts a career I have in mind. Right? So there are plenty of people that are in that phase right now, right? What would you tell them? I'm not sure whether I did say it again, but... No, this question is a bit, it's not easy to answer. Because... Mm. Hey, then, then, then we dive more uh, deeper into it. So basically, you told me that university is a great platform. It's not a great studying place, it's a great platform for people to go there and understand themselves and what they want to do mm. and what they want yeah. to achieve in yeah. life. It's an amazing platform. There are various ways of doing it. Working, part-time, uh, going to uh, more meet-up sessions with people. Okay, is this Malaysia or is this Australia? Uh, let's say Malaysia. Okay. There, there's a lot of ways to do it, right? What do you think? For, for me, if you ask me personally, I think for people in university who thinks about, let's say, they want to drop out and they're not putting any effort for it, just drop out. You're, you're not putting any effort into it. Why, why are you still there? You're not, you're not like, like you said, you're not meeting up with people. You're not trying to expand your circle. You're not trying to learn anything. You're just being there just for being there. And it's taking a toll on an emotional state, which makes things worse. You'd rather go out on a park every evening and have a job and be happy and try to learn things from YouTube or whatnot from there, right? I mean, that's what I think. Like, if you have the idea of dropping out, but like I said, I don't know them well enough. I'm not sure whether it's being convinced by people around them or their own self-belief because you know, they were still young. There's sometimes we make foolish decisions. You know, we say we want to do it, we do it, and then we're like, shit. Why did I do it again? You know? <laughs> like, and, it's, and it's understandable. People are young. We are young. I mean, shit, I'm young. But what okay. would you tell them? Yeah. If you are in university, mm. if you know what you want to do, mm -hmm. definitely for sure. Mm. If you have been putting your time, you know, you said, yes, you have not been doing effort in uni, like, you know, barely showing up for classes and, mm. 
and whatnot. If instead of showing up for classes and doing your work and being involved in uni, you've been taking the time to hone your skills and be good at what you want to do. Say if you want to be an artist or if you want to be a singer, hone your singing skills or hone your, you know, your, your, your technical skills. Mm. And you think your degree will definitely not help you, then yes, I would say, stop wasting your time in uni, stop wasting your money, trying to get a piece of paper, if it's completely irrelevant, mm. and I make the switch to a different degree, or just completely drop out, I mean, make the switch to a degree that you want to pursue, or completely drop out and do your business, or do your, mm. your, your hobbies, or, or whatever. But if you are in university, and you know, you don't, you don't, you're not putting a single effort in uni, you're just there because of your parents, but you're not doing anything else to try to improve yourself or try to mm-hmm. discover what you really want to do, mm-hmm. then I would just say, suck it up and get the paper because at the end of the day, you're going to drop out, you're going to be in a worse position. Mm. Companies in general, you know, they, they hire, they hire, in Malaysia especially, they hire because they look at your degree. Mm. Okay. And if you don't have a degree, it's even more impossible you start a job. Unless you have good family funding to fund whatever hobbies or whatever interests or whatever business you want, you think you want to try to do, if you don't have those, then I'm sorry to say that it's, you know, it is a financial, there's a financial factor to starting your own thing. Mm. And if you are, if you have, compl- if you have completely nothing, you know, no skills because you didn't hone it in university, no paper to fund your, to fund, to get a job to fund your thing, mm. and you still don't know what you want to do, just suck it up for two years. Until you're 20 years old, 21 years old, get your graduate with a degree mm. and then figure out. There's no point. You can figure out at 21 with a paper mm. instead of dropping out and figuring out and fucking up at like 18, 19 mm-hmm. and then getting back to uni. <laughs> that's right. my two no, wait, That sounds good. And the one thing I always ask or like to ask is in your 23 years of life, what has been the one thing you regret the most? You're still young, there's nothing much to regret, but what is one thing that you would try to change or do bad or regret? It can be as small, it can be as big. Well, generally I would say, you know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't live life with regrets. Mm-hmm. But if I have to answer that question, you know, what, one thing that I would do, mm. if I had to go back, if I could go back in time, mm. would be actually a few things. Num- number one, one I would say I would want to learn Chinese. <laughs> That's boring. Come but, on. But actually, but if I could go back to university and to you know redo it all over again, mm. I would want to do more. So what do you mean by do more? Means I think I did not do enough in university. But like compared to now that I'm working full time, I had so much free time in uni. Mm-hmm. I did not use like proper twenty four hour days, mm-hmm. like how I'm trying to do now. So if I could go back, despite on um, yeah, even though I did a few different things, I would still do more. I would have still started my business one or two years early, fail, retry, fail, retry, and just you know instead of focus on so much on part time jobs back then, I would focus more on really improving myself, honing the skill sets that I wanted to to hone, that could be beneficial for me now. All right then, all right then, all right. <laughs> That's about it. Thank you, Jared, for being on my. Second or first podcast, I'm trying it out. No worries. Why not? Alright, thank you all. See ya.